Welcome to Delhi class of Ministry of Education, Grade 26. Myself, Ajita Mary, representing Centre for Higher Secondary Education. In today's class, we are going to see the continuation of the first topic, further mechanics, momentum. The major learning objectives for today's class are well, we are going to investigate collisions in two dimensions. When you apply the law of conservation of momentum to situations in two dimensions, collisions and explosions, you will be able to derive and use the equation for the kinetic energy of a non relativistic particle and analysis of this kinetic energy in both one dimension and two dimension collisions. Before we step into today's topic, let us have a quick glance through what we have learned in the previous class. The first important thing that we have learned is law of conservation of momentum. What is law of conservation of momentum states? The total momentum of a system before collision is equal to the total momentum after collision provided no external forces are acting on the system. And we have seen the two types of collision. The first one is elastic collision. Collision in which kinetic energy is conserved. Meaning, kinetic energy before collision is equal to kinetic energy after collision. And the second type of collision that we have seen is inelastic collision. It is the collision in which kinetic energy is not conserved. Meaning, kinetic energy before collision is not equal to kinetic energy after collision. And we have seen analysis of all these collisions in 1D. Collisions in 1D means collision along same straight line. But in today's class, we are going to see the collisions in two dimensions. So now let's start today's topic. Collisions in 2D. In this case, collision involves two bodies. The two most common Category either collision takes place at an angle or colliding objects move off at an angle. Look at the first category. Before collision, the masses move from two different angles and they collide and join together and move off together with the same moment. But in the second category, before collision, they are moving along straight lines, but after collision, they move off at different angles. One thing you need to understand here, momentum is a vector quantity. So in this type of collision, momentum has components along both coordinates involved. Momentum is conserved along each coordinates because net momenta is zero in a collision. So how do we show that momentum is conserved in a collision? When a momentum vector diagram is given like this, how to confirm momentum is conserved. Let us analyze the situation one by one. Look at the first situation. In this case, the two particles sticking together. When two masses collide and stick together, a third momentum vector is formed. From conservation of momentum, the sum of the two vectors before the collision must be equal to the single resultant momentum vector after the collision. So before collision, they are moving at two different directions and after collision, a single common momentum vector. So in this case, how do we confirm momentum is conserved? You know that the total momentum before collision must be equal to total momentum after collision according to the law of conservation of momentum. So we need to add these two momentum vectors. That should be equal to this. So to draw the momentum vector diagram, we need to add these. So first to start with the P1. So draw P1, add P2, and these two together, it will be equal to the third momentum vector. So it forms a closed triangle like this. This confirms that momentum is conserved. Now we understood how to draw a momentum vector diagram to confirm momentum is conserved in a collision. Now look at the second scenario. In this case,
is moving more, strikes the stationary mark. So before collision, there is a single momentum vector P1, but after collision, we have two momentum vectors P2 and P3. So the total momentum before collision is equal to total momentum after collision. That means the momentum vectors P2 and P3 added together should be equal to P1. So now let's start constructing the momentum vector diagram. So P2 plus P3. So first draw P2, add P3, and that will be equal to P1. So we get a momentum vector diagram. This clearly shows momentum is conserved. So when a momentum vector is given, if you are asked to show a momentum conservation, you need to construct a momentum vector diagram like this. Hope you understood how to draw momentum vector diagram. Now let's see a special case. In this case, an object of momentum X moves due east, collides with another object of momentum Y that moves due north. But after collision, they move together with a common velocity. What will be the resultant momentum in magnitude and direction? In this case, if you see, x moves due east, y moves due north. Two perpendicular vectors. As you know, two perpendicular vectors means we can directly apply Pythagoras theorem. But first, let us see how to construct the momentum vector diagram here. So, due east is wrong. Then, add due north. The resultant forms as this red line. So, it forms a right angle triangle. So, you can apply Pythagoras theorem to find the magnitude of the resultant momentum. R square is equal to x square plus y square. So, resultant momentum is calculated as R is equal to square root of x square plus y square. But how do you find the direction? You need to mark this angle theta in the vector diagram. Then calculate theta using tan theta. You know that tan theta is opposite divided by adjacent. So it is y by x. So thereby you can find out the angle theta is tan inverse y by x. And this type of calculation is very common in the case of collisions in two dimensions. And now let's see when collisions in two dimensions takes place like this, how to solve this type of question. You need to understand, collisions in two dimensions obey the same rule as collision in one dimension. The total momentum in each direction is same before and after the collision. Look at this scenario here. Before collision, the masses M1 and M2 move at velocities U1 and U2 respectively along X. But after collision, they move off at two different angles, theta1 and theta2. The mass M1 move at velocity P1, whereas mass M2 with the velocity P2. So if you apply resolution of vectors, when a vector is inclined to an angle theta, with the angle we will have cross component and the perpendicular coordinate you will get sine of component. By applying that same principle here, you will be getting a long x-axis, which is m1, v1, cos theta1 for the first mass. And along the vertical direction, you will get m1, v1, sin theta. Whereas for mass m2, along x, it will be m2, v2, cos theta2. And along y, you will get m2, v2, sin theta. Now let us see how momentum is conserved and how to write the momentum conservation equation for this type of collision. Okay, now quickly look at the analysis of momentum. So before collision, so before collision, ball M1, the first ball, along X it has momentum M1 U1. We do not have any vertical component. So along Y its momentum is zero. Now look at ball B, ball two. In in this case, its momentum along x is m2 u2, along y it is a. Now look at what's happening after collision. First, let us look at for ball 1. In this case, along x, it will have a component m1 v1 cos theta1. Then what will be its component along y? 
which is m1 b1 sin theta then what about mod 2 it will have a horizontal component m2 b2 cos theta 2 but vertical is minus m2 b2 sin theta 2 now we understood why is it minus because in this case the vertical component is downwards now let's see how to write the moment of conservation equation along each coordinate first one along x along x the total momentum before collision is equal to total momentum after collision so we need to add these two that's b equal to these two so m1 u1 plus m2 u2 that is total momentum before collision that is equal to m1 v1 cos theta 1 plus m2 v2 cos theta 2 that is total momentum after collision now look at for same thing we need to apply for y direction so before collision it is 0 and after collision we need to add these two quantities so it is 0 is equal to m1 v1 sin theta 1 plus minus m2 v2 sin theta 2 so this is how you need to form two conservation equations along each coordinate because momentum is conserved in positions because net momentum is zero in any type of position now let's see one question how this equation is applied to find out unknown quantity okay in this question you can see in a pole shot a cue ball has a mass 0.17 kilogram it travels at 6 meter per second and hits the stationary black ball in the middle of one end of a table. The black ball also has a mass 0.17 kilogram, travels away at 45 degree and 4.24 meter per second ending up in the corner package. Find the velocity of the cue ball after the collision and you are asked to check whether the given collision is elastic or inelastic. So this is a scenario. The cue ball is moving and colliding with the black ball which was initially stationary but after collision the cue ball moves off at an angle 45 degree with the horizontal whereas sorry the black ball moves off at uh, 45 degree we need to find out what happens to the cue ball. So the simple way of solving this question is first write on the given data. So here we consider the cue ball is ball 1 and the black ball is ball 2 but in this case anyway m1 is equal to m2 is equal to 0 0.17 kilogram this initial velocity of the q ball is u1 equals 6 meter per second then velocity of the black ball after collision is 4.24 the angle through which it is deflected is 45 degree but we don't know the velocity of the q ball now let's apply law of conservation of momentum along x and along y along x so only the q ball is moving before collision so its momentum is written as m1 u1 then after collision both balls are moving so we need to write the component along x so it would be m1 v1 cos theta 1 plus m2 v2 cos theta 2. Similarly, when you write the conservation of momentum equation along y, you get 0 is equal to minus m1 v1 sin theta 1 plus m2 v2 sin theta 1. Now what we need to do is we need to substitute all these data in these two equations and solve those two equations in order to find out the values of v1 and theta 1. Now let's see how to do that calculation. So along x. It is m1 u1 is equal to m1 v1 cos theta 1 plus m2 v2 cos theta 2. By substituting m1 as 0.17 u1 6. Again m1 0.17 into v1 cos theta 1 both are unknown quantities plus 0.17 into 4.24 into cos 45. By simplifying this you will end up as v1 cos theta 1 is equal to 3. That is considered as equation 1. Similarly, substitute the data for uh, conservation of momentum along y. 0 is equal to minus m1 v1 sin theta 1 plus m2 v2 sin theta 2. You will get an equation like this. 0 is equal to minus 0.17 into v1 sin theta 1 plus 0.17 into 4.24 into sin 45. You will get the second equation. v1 sin theta 1 is equal to 3. So, one 
we get these two equations, divide the equations so that V1 cancels out, you will end up that sine theta 1 divided by cos theta 1. In this case, it is 3 by 3, that is equal to 1. But what is the sine theta divided by cos theta, which is tan theta? So we could write this as tan theta 1 is equal to 1. So we can find out theta 1 as tan inverse 1, which is 45 degrees. Now, how do you find out P1? Substitute this theta 1 in any one of the equations. We will be able to find out P1. Here, so I am uh, substituting the value of theta 1 in equation 1. So V1 cos 45 is equal to 3. So we can find out V1 as 3 divided by cos 45. We get tan plus 4.24 meter per second. So these type of questions are normally asked for 3 to 4 marks. But if you follow the sequence of steps, you will not go wrong. So you can actually do the calculations directly. Now let's move on to the second part. To verify whether the, the position is elastic or inelastic. For that, you need to find out the kinetic energy before collision. In this case, half m1 q1 square because only the q ball was moving before collision. So by substituting the data, you get tan plus 3.062 joules. But kinetic energy after collision, which is half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square. Now substituting the data, you get tan plus 1.53 plus 1.53, which is exactly 3.062 joules. So compare the values of kinetic energy before and kinetic energy after. They are equal in this case. So we can conclude that the given collision is an elastic collision. So another one thing you would have noticed, the angle between the words if you try to calculate, it is 45 degree plus 45 degree, it is 90 degree. In the case of collisions in 2D, if the balls are identical, the angle between the balls after collision is exactly 90 degree for it to be elastic. Now let's move next section which is explosion. Explosion is generally a stationary mass splitting into two parts and they move in the opposite direction. The explosions can also be treated as collision because momentum is conserved in explosion. Look at the, in this situation. A stationary mass 120 grams is split into 20 grams and 100 grams. A bigger part and a smaller part. So how to show that momentum is conserved? You know that momentum before uh, explosion should be equal to momentum after explosion. Momentum before explosion is zero, so momentum after explosion should also be zero. So zero is equal to so the first mass we consider m1 v1, the second mass is moving in the opposite direction, so minus m2 v1. So bringing one term on to the other side, you get m1 v1 is equal to m2 v2. So for the explosion, a stationary mass exploding into two parts, this is a condition for conservation of momentum. M1 V1 equals M2 V2. But this equation gives the explanation why the bigger part actually moves at smaller velocity, whereas a smaller part actually moves at higher velocity because the product has to be equal. Now let us see the situation of practical situation of explosion. A cannonball is being fired from the cannon device here and you would have noticed actually the ball actually moves off at very high velocity. How is it possible? You can see the product is constant. So the mass of the cannonball is very very less compared to the mass of the cannon device. So the speed at which it is ejected out to be extremely high. So let us see how to for questions of explosions. This is another interesting example of an explosion firing a bullet from a gun. We have a 4 kilogram rifle loaded with a 0 0.010 kilogram bullet. When the rifle is fired, the bullet exits the barrel with a velocity of 300 meter per second. How fast does the gun recoil backwards? As we, see, as we have seen, momentum is conserved. M1V1 equals M2V2. Substituting the data, you get tan from 0.75 meter per second. In this case, you see the bullet 
So the correct answer is A. Now the second question, a ball has mass 0 0.4 kilogram and kinetic energy 9 joules. Which of the following is the momentum of the ball in kilogram meter per second? So here it is momentum, so we write the equation square root 2 mvk. So 2 into 0 0.4 into 9. So the correct answer here is C, 2 into 9 into 0 0.2. And last question. An object moving not with momentum 23 newton second collects with an object moving east with momentum 35 newton seconds. They are moving off together after collision. Which of the following will give the magnitude of the final momentum in newton second? It is perpendicular vector, so you apply Pythagoras theorem. So the magnitude of the final momentum is square root of 35 square plus 23 square. So the correct answer is D. So before we come, let's play the quick summary of what we learned today. Analysis of collision in two dimension we have seen. Momentum vector diagram to verify conservation of momentum and how to use conservation of momentum in problems of collisions in 2D. We have seen analysis of explosion, derivation of kinetic energy of non-relative stick particle, and we have seen that analysis of this kinetic energy expressed for elastic collision. In addition to this, uh, we have an important experiment for the verification of law of conservation of momentum and two four practicals from this topic that we'll be seeing later. Until then, bye. Thank you. Wish you all the best.